Hi, Sheldon Ningwall here again. Welcome to the fourth video in our series on setting up your base. In this video, we're going to focus on setting the height of your bridge, not the intonation, just the height. Fortunately, modern bridges are pretty good these days. Most of them are set and forget, and they don't lose their adjustment over time. So if you already like the way your bridge is set, chances are the only adjustment you'll need to do action wise from season to season is at the truss rod end. However, if you do want to adjust the bridge height, here's how we go about it. And one thing to keep in consideration is we're not just adjusting the height of the bridge, we're also trying to maintain a smooth and even arc across the tops of the strings. So to show you what I mean and how you, how you view that smooth, even arc, take a look at how Graham is holding the bass. He's holding it like this. He's looking at a very low angle, almost parallel to the uh, top surface of the body and just rotating the bass ever so slightly just to get an idea of how the individual string heights are and how they relate to each other. So just to illustrate this, we've lowered the D string uh, lower than it should be. And you can see, if you look carefully, it is subtle, but you can see that the D string is noticeably lower than the other strings. It doesn't have that nice smooth arc. So in the truss rod video, we used a straight edge to illustrate um, the strings or to represent the strings. And I'll use that again. So as you raise the bridge, you can see most of what's happening is in the, in the upper frets. And the idea is to bring the bridge as low as possible without creating buzz in those frets. Um, a good rule of thumb is take it down as far as you can until it starts to buzz and then raise it back up until it quits buzzing. So we always start with the, the first string. In the case of a five string bass, that would be the G. And we adjust that, only that. We adjust the G string down as far as it can and play while we're doing that to uh, check for buzz. And once we find a spot that we're happy with, then that becomes our bass line. That's where we adjust the rest of the strings to. Uh, we at the shop use an engineering rule that's um, graduated in 1 64th increments. And so our specifications are 3 64ths for a really low action, 4 64ths for a medium low action, and 5 64ths for a medium action then every second string is 1 64th higher. Now that gets a little hard to measure, especially if you don't have an engineering rule. So we've uh, found a bunch of Dunlop picks that roughly match those specifications. Um, the Dunlop 0.38 millimeter pick is exactly 1 64th. Um, a Dunlop 2 millimeter pick is almost exactly 5 64ths. And so if you can slide a 5 64ths pick underneath the G string at the 12th fret, then you've got a good bass line for a medium action. We use a two millimeter pick for the G string. We can just add a 0.38 millimeter to add 1 64th to measure our A. Just tape them together. Got a nice little handle that we can slide under the A. And then for the B string, add one more 0.38 millimeter pick and now we have something for the B. When you're adjusting your bridge, it's really easy to get lost and forget where you started from. So what I recommend is keep everything in half turn increments. And every time you make an adjustment on any particular string, write it down. If you go too far and you wanna get back to where you started, just follow the piece of paper and take it back up increment by increment until you're back to where you started from. So the cool thing about keeping track of all the adjustments you made on the G string is that if you were originally happy with the arc that you had, the relationship you had with the saddles to begin with, now you just have to transfer that same number of turns to every other saddle and they'll all be back to that same relationship. They'll just be at the new height now. Make sure after every saddle height adjustment, you retune because the change in tension changes the measurement and you wanna make sure you're accurate at this point. All right, so now that you have your bridge set, it's time to move on to the next video and we're gonna cover adjusting your pickup heights.